Hi, and welcome back. Uh, today's a different style video. Uh, today, I'm just going to go through my model job bag and what I keep inside of it. In case you guys don't know, uh, hi, I'm Catherine. Um, I talk about designer and luxury handbags in the resale market generally, but my other job is that I model professionally, and I've been modeling for like 13 or so years now. Is that right? Uh, anyways, I just got home from a, I just got home from a photo shoot, and I'm um, sorry if it's noisy out there, it's great, we're having a huge rainstorm at the moment, but <laughs> I just got home from a photo shoot, I had a 7.30 a.m. call time this morning, and that's when this makeup was done, so I'm sure it's greasy, I probably need to blot it, I'm just figure before I rinse everything off, before I unpack this bag, that maybe I'd show you guys what's inside of it. Um, so the thing about modeling is that you kind of have to be prepared for everything. Um, that's why I used so huge of a bag. Sorry, this oil is really bothering me. I can see it in my viewfinder and I absolutely must dab it. Ugh. Yeah, this makeup has been on me since 8 o'clock this morning. And you know, all things considered, like it's what? 5.30. Um, I'd say it held up pretty well. Maybe I'll edit this out. <laughs> so the bag that I always use, I would say like 99% of the time for modeling jobs is this one. This is my Givenchy Shopper. Um, I bought this bag in 2016. Uh, this was a bag I bought specifically for modeling jobs. Um, this one is basically like Givenchy's version of the Neverfull. I don't know if they still do them, but they used to do a version of this bag in like different prints for every season. Uh, this collection, I believe, is from either 2013 or 2014. It's called the Magnolia and Moth. Uh, you can find them for great deals out there on the resale market. If you're in the market for a Neverfull and want something that's maybe a little bit more unique, but also a much, much better price, I think I've seen these for as low as $400. So it's the size of a GM Neverfull, and it is absolutely humongous. Quality is great. It's just a little bit more, uh, a little bit more obscure of a bag, and I've had it for how many years? 2016 is nah. <laughs> seven years. I've had this bag for seven years and it's still perfect. It's still going strong. It carries all of my crap and we're going to get into what's inside. First, I'm going to take out the regular purse stuff. Uh, this is my Louis Vuitton mini pochette. It has my AirPods. Mostly any bag that I carry, I'll have this with my AirPods inside of it. Um, the key things here that I keep it, that I keep are my portable charger. Uh, this one's from a brand called Clutch, and it's really nice and slim. So the thing about modeling is that like, you have to absolutely be prepared for everything. Um, our shoot today could have been outside. You can hear that it's raining right now. By the way, I live in Miami, uh, so the weather can be very unpredictable. Um, sometimes you're indoors in the studio. Sometimes you're out on a location. Sometimes it's on the beach. And uh, generally on my end as a model, I don't really get to know that too far in advance. Obviously, there's other stuff in here. I'm not going to like get too deep into what's in my video for shit but I do keep uh, these oil uh, oil absorbing sheets. I got these from Forever 21 and I swear by them. The rest of it is just kind of like re regular purse stuff. Wallet uh, with my key on it. Now for the fun and interesting stuff. First thing I bring out of the bag is a headscarf. Uh, this is one that I have just for, I've had forever and I use it to sleep in. So for all of you big haired, cuties like me. Uh, I keep this on just in case I have to get in and out of um, a garment that has a smaller neck hole. Um, so these, so when you use silky materials like this and something that goes all the way over you, you just put it over your head like this and then you're able to put the garment over you and you're also able to save your makeup. So whether you have big hair or not, it can actually protect your makeup from getting onto the garment. That can be a really big deal. Um, most of what I shoot is more commercial stuff that includes e -com. Um, basically, like when you go shopping on websites like I don't know Macy's and Target, you see pe like women, you see people wear modeling the clothes. That's ecom. It's for e-commerce, and I do a lot of uh, I do a lot of that. But that's actually what I was doing today. Next up, I have a bra. Uh, I always carry two bras with me, um, so I have. I'm wearing my strapless bra underneath here. For all of you who are maybe. Um, more melanated. Always try to find a bra that is somewhat closer to your skin tone, um, especially when you have all of the hot lights on you. If you wear like a beige color, I'm just gonna show you. If you wear like a beige color like this, and there's a light garment, the light may penetrate through it, and um, you may see the bra underneath. Especially if it's video. There's a lot of video nowadays. So, pro tip: 
try and find bras that match your skin tone. I know it can be difficult and they can be more expensive. I've spoken about this before. Be sure to check out that video. But it is a godsend if you are going on a photo shoot. As a matter of fact, I need to find a convertible version in this color for myself. This is the pouch that this bag comes with. Um, I also use this bag a lot to travel and typically I'll carry like my technique stuff in here like chargers and um, other things like that. Like I mentioned, uh, today we were in shooting inside of a home and um, so there, were, there was plenty of access to cords and plugs and chargers and everything like that. But they kept me pretty busy today and I really didn't have a whole lot of downtime to sit on my phone and let it drain anyway. Uh, that is not always the case because sometimes uh, they'll sit you in the makeup and you'll be waiting um, hours for your shot to start and um, today was not that. They kept me busy the whole time I was there. You guys may know I always carry a mini umbrella but it's especially important to keep one with you when you go to sets. Um, they, they may have them sometimes but as you can see like I live in Miami where the weather can be super unpredictable. It is thundering and pouring rain right now and um, it's a 50-50 shot that we could have been uh, shooting uh, outside on a location, like the beach or somewhere like that. So always handy to have one of these. This is a new one I just bought from Target, and it's even smaller than my last one. Like, look at that compared to my phone, for example. I cannot recommend this enough. I want to say I got it from Target, but I'll have it linked down below. Now we get to the fun part. This is the beauty stuff that I bring with me. So first we'll talk about the makeup. Um, makeup, I'm pretty fortunate in that most makeup artists will have um, my palette and colors as a part of their kit. Um, others are not so lucky and they have to have to make sure to carry the, their foundation and their concealer and the products that work with their skin tone. Um, I've been pretty lucky on that front, but I do just in case like to carry it um, because you really never know. Modeling has like zero level of continuity when it comes to like your day-to-day -day set. Like you can be working on the same job and, if, and, and uh, if they book you for two days or more, you can be working with an entirely new crew of people on the second day. So you really have no idea. Um, which is why I do always make sure to bring just my basic essentials. This is uh, what I would carry on like a no normal-ish day, um, maybe to touch up my makeup. Um, but this is just my basic makeup bag. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I will tell you that I carry an extra set of brushes um, because sometimes makeup artists can be less hygienic than maybe perhaps you may like. Most makeup artists are lovely and do a great job with a few outlying exceptions. Okay, so I always like to keep my Laura Mercier press, press powder. Um, this one is the uh, translucent in like the light color and she has since released one that is closer to my skin tone that I haven't tried yet. It's definitely something that's on my list of things to do. Um, other than that, you know, just carry the basics. Uh, this is the foundation I'm using. Now, of course, I'm not an expert on how to do light for camera, and I'm usually not a part of like the meetings with all the mood boards and things like that. But you just you never know what can happen. Um, if I need to be able to touch my makeup up, or if there maybe isn't going to be a makeup artist on set, you have to be able to, to at least do something. And I just make sure that I have the um, main tools necessary for me to do that. I fully don't have an explanation for this. But um, they do the makeup early in the morning, and then so you go do your looks, and then you break for lunch, usually around anywhere from like 12 to 1, and then you go back. But after eating like a sandwich or like a rice plate or whatever, um, you know, your lips are all like messed up, or you want to go have like a water break or something like that and mess up your lip gloss. So what I started doing is carrying a straw. Uh, this is a reusable one. It just pulls out like this, it's telescopic, screws together, and voila, now you have your straw. Yeah, a little carrying case, it's magnetic, and I've just found it very odd to, that um, most makeup artists do not carry uh, straws with them to give the talent so you don't mess up the, the, the lip all the time. Now, I'm a curly girl, as you can see. Wear it, wear it proudly, um, but I prefer to wear extensions on um, photo shoots because I find that with my own hair, like it can be unpredictable. It can get frizzy. It can get like like weighed down. It can like not react to products well. So this extension hair is definitely what I prefer to use for myself. And even if you're maybe not like natural 
highly textured hair like me, um, I do recommend any of you, no matter like what color or hair type you have, um, find some clip-in hair extensions that match your hair very well and try to keep them in your kit. Um, by the way, here's a secret insider tip. Almost everyone you see in professional prints is wearing some type of hair extension. If you are at home by yourself looking in the mirror thinking that you have like the thinnest, worst, most flat, lifeless hair, uh, don't compare it to the magazines, don't compare it to social media, don't compare it to the commercials because we are all wearing leaf. By the same token, this is specific to me and my uh, texture. For added versatility, I have a ponytail that matches this texture. That is not going to be the subject of today's video, but uh, just in case we need to like pull this back a bit more. Uh, we ended up today pulling this back into um, sort of a bun, and I was a little bit apprehensive, but we were able to get the job done, and the hair, style, the hair and makeup stylist that I worked with did an amazing job. People are not experienced with textured hair like mine, so when people uh, are a little, like, do, like, have a bit more, like, info on how to handle it, I, re it, I really, really do appreciate that. So, um, shout out to her. Uh, let's now get into the hair stuff. This is the fun part. Um, by the way, um, what, these pouches all came in a set together, and I just ordered a second set of them. Uh, they're from Travelon. I've been using them for absolutely forever. Can't recommend them enough. Really durable, and they're waterproof, which is very, very important to me in carrying, you know, some of my nicely bags with liquids and cosmetics, and even pens and pencils. Like, I don't let pens or makeup or anything that could open uh, roam free inside of my handbags. Absolute no go for me, so I can't. So I really recommend pouches and stuff like this. They come in a set of five, and I got them from Amazon, so I'll link them down below. Uh, this was a part of my original hair kit, so I used to wear my hair straight, and everything I needed, with, with a couple exceptions, um, I could just fit into here. I also use this for traveling. Um, in here, I just have a couple of alligator clips. Um, and I use like the travel size uh, containers you can get at the drugstore to put, this looks like shea butter, uh, some hair gel. Now this here is just some almond oil, the, like food grade that you get from the grocery store. And this isn't the actual bottle for it, I just kind of put it in here. I just like that it's, um, the size of this bottle is like a travel conditioner from some hotel and I truly like how compact it is and it can actually hold a lot of product relatively. So I also keep hair, um, hair pins, alligator clips, uh, here's a straight, or part of a straight razor that obviously broke in here, um, and then larger size hair elastics to wrangle maybe this. So now that I've pulled this out, this is the curly hair kit. <laughs> you notice it's a bit bigger. Um, to start off, I have a spray bottle. This is just to keep water. Um, typically, makeup artists don't keep these, and I just, you know, noticed that I just needed a spritz of water here and there. Um, this one also um, closes and opens just by um, by twisting, and that's why I'm able to store it. You can see it's not squirting anything. And now we twist it a little bit, and oh, I'm gonna push that back in a little bit. You can kind of control the nozzle. It's like that was more of a mist. That's typically how I'm making a mess. Uh, typically how I like to spritz my hair um, throughout the course of the day or if it's getting like frizzy or I need to like run my fingers through it or anything like that. Just give it a nice little spritz. I like these because you can control the stream like I just showed you a second ago and it closes easily. This is just plain water. You can obviously add conditioner or oil or whatever. Next, I have the travel size of Not Your Mother's Curl Talk Defining uh, Defining Cream. Uh, this is a leave-in cream that's also a gel. Um, I use this on this hair, obviously, but I also use it on my own hair, and um, I really, really like it. It's moisturizing and it has lots of hold. Next, I wish they made travel sizes of this because I don't need this whole bottle. Um, but this is a uh, mousse I'm a huge, huge fan of. This is the Ledu Crazy Sexy Curl Honey Setting Foam. Um, this one moisturizes and holds, and it has a really nice consistency to it. But the consistency on it is great. It's like a, it's like a foamy mousse, except it's creamy. And it just does a great job of, like, holding while nourishing, moisturizing, and um, you're able to, like, and it gets enough slip for you to detangle if necessary to, to define your curls a bit better. Uh, this is new to my arsenal. <laughs> I 
And I like it because it doesn't have like that much of a, it's, it doesn't have a heavy scent like some of their other products do. Um, I like the consistency of it. It's nice and creamy and it does have uh, some nice slip. Like, I mean, it's hard to ask me if it's heavy or light because I'm going to say it's, it's not very heavy, but that's because I'm used to using really heavy products. And this isn't super heavy, but if you don't have this, then you probably would think of it as heavy. So that's what it looks like here. I, I think of that as like a lightweight. But uh, everyone is different and everyone has their preference. Uh, I also keep a tail comb. Um, these are good if you want to like do a scratch into like a braid or something. Most of you already know that trick. Now the one thing that's missing in here that I forgot to bring um, today is my afro pick. Uh, that would also go inside of here. Put that down is this. Uh, this is my detangling brush. There's a couple that I, that I use, but I like this one because it has this. It's called the Easy Detangler. Defines, detangles, and it's much more gentle. Like if the teeth move, you can comb it. Comb your hair this way. Yeah, this way or that way. This way to detangle and this way to define. So very handy to keep. And I have another one that I use as well, but they're kind of interchangeable for this for this purpose. Last up is new to my wardrobe, wardrobe, arsenal. Uh, that is this blow dryer. It's a travel size. Um, I found it at Target, but I, what I like about it is that it's so small, so lightweight. Um, so it um, closes just like this, so it's easy for storage, and I just keep it inside of this zip pouch. Um, what I love about this one, though, and the reason why I'm so blown away by it, is that it's small, but diffusers can be humongous, and, you know, space is at a premium. Sometimes I have to travel, and most of the time, because curly hair on sets is something, it's, it's uh, kind of new, the stylists are very often not prepared for my hair texture. So that means so they don't have diffusers. Now I'm keeping a diffuser and this one is so small. This is the smallest hair diffuser I've ever seen in my life. It just takes this much space to hold an entire blow dryer with a diffuser. It just clips on just like that and obviously it's not plugged in, but I can just uh, go in and diffuse on the go if necessary. Really inexpensive. I'm pretty sure I found this at like Target, but if all you're doing is diffusing, then um, I think this is just so perfect. I have not used this to do like a full like blow dry, like to straighten my hair just yet because I have a couple of others, but uh, 10 out of 10 for the diffuser option and how easy and lightweight it is to, to pack and travel. Okay, that is it for the model job bag. Um, pretty much that's kind of just the basics of what I keep and what I bring with me. I've been modeling now for close to 13 years. Every single job, I felt like I was missing something or I'd forgotten something or there's just something I wish I had that I didn't. Today, after 13 years of being in the industry, on this photo shoot today, I can firmly say that all of my pieces, everything that I needed, I had inside of my bag. And that is such an accomplishment, you have no idea. Anyways, um, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, this is just chill and it is pouring down right outside. I'm losing my light. But if you have any questions, I guess, about modeling, I have gotten requests to do like, um, come, like come with me on set and vlogs. And that's unfortunately something that I'm not going to be able to do um, because the clients just tend to not like it and it's hard to film doing your job while you're actually doing it. So out of respect to the clients when they book me, um, that's probably not on the table. But as, other than that, um, I can see what I can put together. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And let me know if you have any questions or suggestions on content. We're probably we're going to be going back to handbags and luxury resale, but this is a little peek inside of my other job. So now I get to go wash this makeup off and get in my bed. I'm tired. <laughs> see you guys later.